All right, welcome back. Yes, uh, we are on the very last lap of, uh, of the show, the very last segment of the show. And then what would, would the focus be? The focus is around um, renewed um, anti-graft war challenges before the EFCC boss. Yes, we're all aware uh, that there is a new, uh, a new boss on the block. Yes, he is um, Abdul Rashid Bawa. He was confirmed yesterday by the Senate after he was nominated by the president. 40-year-old Nigerian, uh, not a policeman, but then he is now the chairman of the EFCC. There are big, many questions uh, making the rounds right now. Is, uh, I mean, we saw in the papers today where uh, the big man himself, Sage, is concerned if uh, Malami, that's the AGF, would allow uh, uh, the, the young man to succeed. There are many questions uh, uh, around the fights, the anti-graft war in Nigeria. Let's speak with uh, a lawyer. We're speaking with um, a barrister, Noah Ajere, who is a legal practitioner all the way from Abuja. So good to have you join us on this program this morning, barrister, barrister Noah. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. We await uh, uh, our other guests on this segment. But uh, meanwhile, let's stay with you on this conversation, barrister Noah. The anti-graft war in Nigeria, what, what exactly would be your assessment? Uh, let's keep put aside uh, uh, the, new, the new man on the block, uh, Abdul Rashid Bawa, uh, for now. Let's look at how well we are fed before Abdul Rashid uh, Bawa. How would you want to appraise uh, uh, the, the fight against uh, our, our corruption in Nigeria so far? Okay, um, thank you for that um, question. Um, to assess... Uh, a corruption um, drive and how, how, how well we have done so far. Uh, I will personally not rate Nigeria too well. Um, apart from that, um, recently we all saw the Transparency, Transparency International um, report on Nigeria. We have, we have dropped drastically and our rating is extremely low. And um, that is due to the fact that we have seen over the years, we have seen um, the unholy communion and the, and the relationship between the anti-corruption agency and the politicians. Um, we have observed that um, the agency has now become a tool to oppress and to suppress uh, political opponents. They've um, to a very large extent deviated from the, from, from the sole mandate of justice and fighting corruption uh, without fear and favor. Uh, we have seen a situation whereby favoritism, nepotism, ethnicity, and all other vices have crept into the fight against corruption. And um, corruption has now become more or less a, a question of um, um, political um, issue. So um, away from that, um, this is a new opportunity to turn things around. And um, I, I keep saying at every opportunity that I have that when, when you don't tackle the issue of poverty, you don't tackle the issue of insecurity, you don't tackle the issue of marginalization, you don't tackle the issue of discrimination, favoritism, and all these vices, if you don't tackle them, um, you are indirectly going to be promoting corruption. So when you have these issues that are promoting corruption indirectly, and you, you keep fighting the end result of cor corruption, which is corruption itself, you are fighting corruption and you are not tackling, tackling the root cause. We are, we're just going around in circles. We're going around in circles and we'll never see an end. Uh, we know that corruption cannot be 100% eliminated, or at least you can reduce it to the barest minimum. But it should be a holistic approach. We need to look at issues of poverty, job creation, um, nepotism, favoritism, discriminations in government appointment, and uh, embrace true federalism in Nigeria. It is only when we do that, then drastically corruption will reduce in itself. Because no matter the number of people you convict, no matter the number of people you 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 would, um, if you if you jail or convict two thousand, be rest assured that another five thousand is being produced on a daily basis, and people are just being smarter by the day. So uh, I will advocate a situation whereby, as as we are looking at looking at with corruption itself, we should also look at what are the root cause of corruption. This is also very, very important. Yes, uh, um, that's indeed really a very beautiful place to start uh, the conversation. Uh, looking at the root cause itself would be a very good way 
uh, to start the conversation. Let's, uh, 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 we'll come back to you very soon, uh, um, um, Noah. We'll come back to you pretty soon, but let's take a listen to this report. Uh, let's see how how uh, it was captured. Okay, the screening of um, Abdul Rashid Bawa yesterday. Let's, let's, let's shift the conversation to, to Bawa after this report. The nomination of Abdul Rashid Bawa as the substantive chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has been trailed with petitions and allegations. His accusers have hinged their action on a case of alleged theft yet to be addressed by him and the fact that his rank was too low to head the commission. The chairman designate had to answer questions from lawmakers regarding these allegations. When confirmed as chairman, how do you intend to navigate and tackle this thorny issue in order that the EFCC does not run into trouble with the public? There is allegation in, in the press and particularly in the social media that the seized and forfeited assets at Port Harcourt were not properly disposed of. Bawa says allegations of controversial sale of seized assets to proxies during his time as zonal head of his agency in Port Harcourt were untrue. I, as zonal head of the EFCC, never for once sold a single asset in Port Harcourt. I never did. The then secretary of the commission together with three directors and other staff from the headquarters, flew into Port Harcourt and disposed of the trucks and other assets in them that were forfeited to the federal government of Nigeria. In his opening remark, Bauer said his primary aim, among other things, is to repatriate all stolen assets back to the country. And to our strategic partners around the world, particularly in the United States of America, United Kingdom, South Africa, etc. I intend to work with them closely, sharing information and intelligence in order to attain our mutual objectives. The Senate, after a two hour session on Wednesday, confirmed the appointment of Abdul Rashid Bawa as the chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. The nomination of Abdul Rashid Bawa is hereby confirmed as chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Congratulations. From the National Assembly, Georgina Ndukwezaika, Silverbird News 24. Okay, that was how uh, our Georgina Ndukwe, um, Georgina, Georgina and, and, uh, did cover the, the, the screening yesterday. Let, let's, let's come back to you, uh, Barista Noir. Uh, I'm looking at the man Bauer. And I'm beginning to wonder if he has what it takes to succeed in this new new position that he has just been uh, up screened and, and confirmed into. Uh, would you think, would you really think that uh, due diligence was done by the Senate before uh, this young man was confirmed? Because we did hear a few uh, stories, reports around um, his... Um, been moved to a, a, a level that would make him eligible for this position just shortly before he was appointed or nominated by the presidency. Do you think uh, uh, due diligence was done before this appointment and the confirmation was made? Okay, uh, thank you for that question. I, 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 I think in, um, with all sense of responsibility that um, uh, the Senate has done what they what they are um, supposed to do, and I believe that they, they have done uh, due diligence because I'm aware that before um, such um, confirmation, they will have gotten reports from um, the DSS and all of that um, relevant agencies, and they have done a, a bit of their of of the background check. But looking at the the, the timeline, the timeline appears to be very short between the announcement and the confirmation, which, which um, naturally gives um, um, the possibility that it is too short and they might not have done um, the full due diligence as required. But considering the peculiarity of the uh, situation we have, particularly since we've had an acting um, chairman since July um, last year, um, there's, we, we already have so much gap and, um, and globally, um, our rating has really dropped. So we're actually, um, 
we need to run with time. So I, I think in the best circumstances, um, I think they've done what they're supposed to do. All right, um, Barista Noah, um, almost everyone is, you know, celebrating the fact that he's a young man, he's just 40. So do you, do you um, believe or do you think that his youthfulness is actually an advantage this time around? Yes, I, I strongly believe that um, we have stayed with a generation for a very long time. I think um, it is time for the youth to be given responsibility. And I, I welcome the development that he's a young man, he's in his 40s, and um, that is beautiful. But that also poses um, a challenge. Now, uh, he'll, be dealing, he'll, be, he'll be dealing with um, a system that is um, deeply rooted. Um, he, he will need a lot of um, willpower. He will need a lot of courage. He will need a lot of tact and determination. He, will need to, he, he needs more than being young to be able to deliver. But being young is an advantage for him. He has the opportunity now to rewrite history. And I hope that he will be a good student of history, that when he has an unholy communion or relationship with politicians and, um, and, and the masses, the stories are there of what happened to the previous um, office holders. Um, so it, 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 it's a good thing that he's a young man and it will work in his favor if he is smart enough um, to heed to the various advices that are coming in for him. Conversation, uh, Barrison Noir. Uh, and the purpose this morning is uh, uh, an alarm that was raised by Issei Sage, where he says um, that he's afraid that um, the Attorney General of the Federation, uh, uh, Malami, would not allow Bawa to succeed. That is a huge fear coming from a man of that caliber. Let's look at the relationship between the AGF and the EFCC. We all, we're all aware of what transpired uh, between uh, the last day, the estuar embattled um, um, chairman, talking about uh, uh, Magu, Ibrahim Magu. And unfortunately, we have not seen the end of that conversation. And here we have a new, a new uh, AFCC boss. What can you make of the fears that was uh, being uh, alarmed by Ise Sage, a man of that caliber? Yes, I, I, I agree that um, the fears, they are there. And the, the true position is that um, whether spoken or unspoken, the reality is that fighting corruption in Africa, particularly in Nigeria, which is the giant of Africa, is not, is not a child's play. Um, so definitely there will be contentions, there will be oppositions, there are big power brokers that will want to um, ensure that he fails at all costs. So the fears are real. But I still believe that there is, um, his youthfulness can come to play. He will be able to um, take to advice and doggedness. And I would want to advise that he's um, number one, priority is number one loyalty is number one assignment should be to be loyal to the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria any attempt to show loyalty to personalities to show loyalty to the president in person to show loyalty to politicians is um a recipe for failure it would be disastrous for him, because the circle and the stories are there, the history is there. They will use you, they will dump you, they will embarrass you, and they will leave you naked in the markets. So he needs to, like he mentioned, that he will um, stick to the constitution. So I hope he will be able to do that. But the fact remains that he will have a lot of opposition, both in government and out of government. The the opposition is real. The challenges are real. It is not. Um, it is not going to be a child's play. Um, he needs to be brave. He needs to be smart. So um, I will not want to adopt uh, Professor Sagi's um, statement entirely that um, opposition will come and he will need to deal with the AGF alone. It, it goes beyond the AGF. It goes beyond that. It, it, it's, um, fighting corruption is not child's play and it's, um, it's a lot of work. So he needs to step down, buckle up, get his team ready and um, do the youth proud. Because now we're having, for the first time in history, 
a young man who is not a police officer to him to, to handle the affairs of um, EFCC at that level uh, is a huge task and um, we can only hope um, that you would um, you would turn things around. All right, Barrister Noah. Um, shortly before I, uh, we go for a break, I just want to put this question so you can think about it, and when we come back, you answer it. Now, apart from other qualifications, Bawa's profile uh, boasts of uh, him being able to handle, um, in the past, public sector, you know, corruption. I mean, which is a really big issue right now in Nigeria. So much headache in Nigeria. Uh, um, I, I, when we come back from this break, I want you to be able to tell us, you know, what are your expectations saying this? to be cat. So when we come back from this break, Barrister Noah will give us his response to this. This is News Up. Stay with us. The fight against COVID-19 is far from over. We are presently in the community transmission phase. Unfortunately, this is the most deadly part of its spread, and it's more prevalent in high-density areas. Don't become a statistic. Wash your hands frequently with soap and running water, or use a hand sanitizer, and remember to practice physical distancing at all times and avoid crowded places. But if you have no choice, you have the choice of wearing a face mask. Remember, it's not over till it's really over. This is a message from the Silverbird Group. You can now stream Silverbird News 24 live on mobile app. All you need to do is to download Silverbird News 24 app from Google Play Store on your Android devices and App Store or on your Apple devices. Tap the live button at the bottom bar to watch us live 24-7. You can enjoy all our news programs including PJ News and Program. Silverbird News 24. The news never stops. Breaking news stories, insightful documentaries, news reports from around the globe, and original news content. Now available 24 hours daily on Star Times Channel 109. Stream live on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Silverbird N24 Live. Follow on Facebook at Silverbird News 24, on Twitter at Silverbird N24, and on Instagram at Silverbird N24. Silverbird News 24, the news never stops. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is News Hub. And right now we are dealing with the issue of uh, the confirmation of the new EFCC um, boss, um, Bawa. And before we um, went on the break, uh, we were speaking with um, Barrister Noir all the way from Portacot. And um, Abuja. Abuja. in our Abuja studio, I beg your pardon, Barrister Noir from our Abuja studio. And we're talking about um, Bawa being able to handle the public sector corruption, you know, as promised. So, your thoughts on that? What expectations do you have concerning um, or in that regard? Okay, um, thank you so very much for your question. Um, I recall a very popular philosopher, he said, um, you cannot keep doing these things the same way and expect a different result. Um, so you need to do things differently for you to have a different result. Foundationally speaking, um, the structure that has brought in the new FCC chairman remains the same. And um, the structure is such that it, it, it forces him to be loyal to the political class that appointed him. Uh, it, it will take extra courage for him to do things differently. Having said that, what I will expect is that um, things should be done differently for us to have a different result. Uh, public sector corruption is, um, is huge in Nigeria, and there is need to tackle it head on um, without um, party affiliations, without um, 
ethnic um, issues, et ethnic favoritism, or all these issues should be put aside. We, we want to see results. We want to see that in public sector, corruption drops to the barest minimum. And he can do it. He can do it. But it goes beyond, like you rightly mentioned, that he has um, adequate training. He had trainings in the U.S., he had trainings in the U.K., trainings in Nigeria. And he has been there for a very long time. He has been there for over 16 years and uh, as one of the foundational um, staffs of EFCC. So he has seen, he has seen, he has almost seen it all. Um, like I said, it goes beyond training because like we'll always say, um, you, you need to adapt not just to the spirit and the letter, but also to the letter of the law. So he needs, he needs to go beyond what he, has, what he has learned. Learning is good, but now he needs courage. He needs boldness. He needs to be detached. He needs to stay loyal to the Constitution. He needs to ensure that he does not favor anybody. Now, um, it is often said that justice is a three-way traffic. Justice to the victim, justice to um, the accuser, and justice to the society, if I can put it that way. Now, the society, as we have it in Nigeria, can be molded and they already have a perception that even him is not qualified because he has a bad record. And that was why you see him in the Senate trying to defend himself that he did not misappropriate um, anything, the properties that was recovered. That's a bad footing. But having said that, he has a mandate to ensure that there is a cross-board um, um, assessment so that he, he, he's not seen as being used as a tool in the hand of politicians to fight political enemies. He needs to tackle head-on the issue of public sector um, corruption and ensure that in all the categories he is able to um, a reasonable man observing independently will see that he's doing a good job and he doesn't actually have time because first impression matters a lot and he also needs to avoid um, media trial media trial is very dangerous because it will always backfire he needs to avoid media trial. They need to ensure that they do thorough investigation um, be because you cannot, you cannot just um, arraign, um, then you now start requesting for adjournment to investigate. You need to do thorough investigation even before you take um, any step. So um, I want to see things change differently, uh, not just beyond, uh, beyond uh, the, the rhetorics of, um, that we have, we have been used to before now. Real, real transformation. And um, having said that, they need to also do a lot of um, advocacy so that we can address the root cause, causes of um, corruption and all that. That's my expectations. You know, uh, uh, Barrister Noah, uh, the position that um, Abdul Rashid Bawa finds himself today is one position that I really don't envy. Um, and my reasons are not far-fetched. Uh, in Nigeria today, the strongest institution in Nigeria is the political institution and uh, when politi i mean when that institution fights any other institutions they often do win you and i can attest to that so my question my question is this the need to strengthen institutions in nigeria had been highly advocated for over the years and uh, we still don't see that happening it is same nigeria that you hear when you fight corruption Corruption fights back at you, and God help you, you have what it takes uh, uh, to withstand it. I mean, uh, the, the, the latest uh, victim, talking about um, the former chairman of the EFCC, is a case study for us here. But let's move on. I'm afraid that with all of these uh, that we have uh, mentioned and highlighted about the, the new boss, Abdul Rashid Bawa, I'm looking at uh, what kind of signal uh, this could pass to the international community. Uh, are we looking at them seeing us a lot more seriously in our fight against corruption or uh, they probably say it is one and the same? Looking at all the, all the factors that we have reeled out, how he was appointed, uh, was due diligence done, his qualification, his age, does this put us in uh, a good light in the eyes of the international uh, community in our fight against corruption? Yes. Um, like I did mention earlier, I, I said the structure that, that, um, that, that brought him into office, the process 
the shortness of the confirmation um, process and all that is not a good foundation. And um, but he has an opportunity um, to change the narrative now. He has an opportunity to um, show that he he is not going to be used as as a tool to fight fight political um, enemies and political um, rivalry and all that. He has an opportunity to do that. But as we speak, as we speak, I think the international community is just watching and waiting for 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 him to prove them wrong or put them right they are just watching what he will do next we have a golden opportunity now we have a young man who is fully trained well trained and um, who has been there for a very long time who has the opportunity to do the right thing admitting that the foundation um might not be the best but we can't do anything about that because for 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 you to have um a true um a, a successful tenor and an independent um fight fighting um organization against um corruption you need to ensure that that organization is fully independent it's fully independent and is devoid of all forms of political interference but that is not what we have in nigeria but i hope that the new chairman will be bold enough will be brave enough will be smart enough and will be a good student of history to understand what has happened to the uh, immediate past chairman and how things are torn sir, and to, to, to ensure that um, he stays clear of politics and he tries his best to ensure that he stays above board. Because in, in, this, in, this, um, in this system, once, once your hands are sawed with oil, there's nowhere for you to hide. It's just a question of time. So um, I, I want to believe that the international community are ready to cooperate with us. Um, they are just waiting for him to take the right steps and um, will make good efforts and good progress. All right, speaking of the international community, um, this is more like a final thought on this issue. Um, while he was defending himself uh, at, the, at the floor of the Senate, he made mention of having a good standing with the international community to be able to repatriate Nigeria's uh, stolen asset. Now, the question is now the transparency and accountability that is involved in you know, utilizing this um, stolen fund. So I would ask for your final thoughts on it, more like your expectation or recommendation on how this, you know, um, this fund should be used for the betterment of Nigeria, which is, of course, um, uh, the basis of this conversation in the first place. Okay, um, thank you so very much for that question. I, I want to say, like I said earlier on, that he has had good training. But like I said, training is not enough. Now, talking about repatriated funds, which I believe more will still come in uh, to Nigeria. Any, any attempt to use those funds um, for projects that will give opportunity to public sector relooting uh, should be discouraged at all costs. Any project, anything that we will do that will give selected few an opportunity to now relute the, the already recovered looted funds will be disastrous um, for the country. So um, it should be utilized in such a way that it cannot be relooted re at all. Projects that will be for common good across board in all the six geopolitical zones should be something that we should think of. Lasting project that um, generation-wise, we can always point to those projects that this is what was used uh, what we did with this um, XYZ um, funds. Now, talking about this issue, um, I will want to strongly recommend that he needs to be extremely transparent. He needs to be extremely transparent. Um, he needs to respect uh, the Freedom of Information Act and ensures that when um, CSOs and civil organizations and NGOs approach him for information, he responds within two of an eye. Now, when you make information available to the public domain, it, it shows your transparency. It shows that you have nothing to hide. And it, 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 helps, it helps your rating globally. So I want to encourage him and encourage the government to ensure that uh, the proceeds of the looted funds or the, how it is going to be spent or used should be done in such a way that it, it's extremely thoughtless and it's open to the whole world to see. That way, it will even encourage them to repatriate those funds to us, even without having to make so much effort. If you see over the years, we'll have to engage consultants, literally have to beg, negotiate before they give us a here and there. 
but the usage before now has not been has not been transparent. I must be very very it has not been transparent enough, and we can do better. I think that's my um, opinion uh, on that. Uh, unfortunately, I I am I'm thinking that um, uh, the usage uh, of um, repatriated fund is not within the purview of the EFCC chairman. It's a, it's a government thing. His business is to get yeah, the funds back home and uh, whatever government can want to do with it. And if they want to be transparent, which we are asking them to be, that's the way it stands. Thank you so very much, Barrister Noir Ajere, uh, all the way from Abuja. Thank you for your time and thoughts with us on this conversation. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. All right, Messi, it is not an enviable place to be right now. I don't envy uh, Rashid Bauer one bit. The tax ahead of him is a huge one. I mean, huge pretty, tax. Pretty huge one. The uh, crown is a pretty huge one. I just yeah. want to be positive and believe that he's able to handle it. And yes, down the line, we should be able to say, well, thank God we got a young person on the throne, if mm. that is what you want to call it. Yes, uh, so much, so much on his, so much on his shoulders. Uh, I'm just thinking as I'm talking right now. I'm just, I'm thinking as I'm talking right now. So much on his shoulders. He has to deal with a lot of issues. Uh, the public corruption, public space corruption, is one that uh, uh, is quite overwhelming. We, we also have the EFCC running after Yahoo boys and the rest of them. So many more issues that he would have to, to repatriate funds. Um, Nigerians in diaspora that have, I mean, Nigerians that um, stole money and, and, and eloped uh, into, into, into international you, you diaspora. Know what I, you know what I would say? Let's yeah. not worry. He, he stood there at the Senate and he said he's able to handle it. So I'm um, watching with that. We're yes. watching. watching. Nigerians are watching. Absolutely. International community is watching as yes. well. Uh, he, he can't afford to fail. In fact, failure is not an option Absolutely for not. Abdul Rashid Bauer. Okay, that's what we call the wrap on the show today. Uh, thank you so very much, all our viewers and all our colors and all our respondents out there. It's been a beautiful time.